this, uh, this is deer dressing 101, I guess, uh, my own special method. Uh, we don't actually gut the deer in the field. Uh, I think that introduces unnecessary risk of contamination. Uh, and I've come up with a system that saves time uh, and requires less uh, of an effort to, uh, uh, to get the deer on ice quickly. So this is uh, a deer taken on a depredation permit in the state of Kentucky? Yes, this is a nuisance permit that we got to uh, bring the deer population down a little bit. So uh, we've got block and tackle. And you took this one down with an arrow? Yes, uh, we used a crossbow on that. Uh, this is a straight shot. She ran 40 yards, no more. Didn't have to track her. Uh, hard quartering away shot. Uh, so she didn't even know it hit her. Okay, so this is your first cut. First cut, making a small one here. Uh, normally I, make, I used to make a long one all the way around, but it's a lot easier to zip the hide down this way. One side, now we'll slip around to the other side. About the same height. Take. I'm guessing these knives are very sharp. Uh, yeah, as sharp as I can get them. But it helps if you take just a, a short cut up at the top. It makes it much easier yeah, you had mentioned that the reason that you make that tiny incision, which is probably just about, what, two inches uh, as a lateral cut, is to keep the uh, skin from sagging. Yeah. The, tight, the tauter the hide is, the easier it will cut. And it's always a little bit harder down here at the end. But nothing we can't handle. Okay, look at all the fat on her. It's just magnificent. Very healthy dough. So, now we'll take this cut all the way around. To the other side. And this side as well. And then Peel it down somewhat. Get a better grip on it. And so basically you're just pulling the skin off yep, like in two big sheets. Yeah, like a unzipping the sweater and going. You know, the quicker you do all this stuff, the, the uh, less chance you have of introducing bacteria, uh, which of course is the, the big problem here. Now we age our venison here, and so bacteria is something we're, we're always going to be concerned about. We absolutely don't want to introduce any unnecessary bacteria in this whole process here. Now something I'm going to do right now is I'm going to cut a little hole and try and use that as a handle. Pull this down. As you can see though, these older does are a little bit recalcitrant with their hides. This is all shank meat in here and a lot of guys don't like that but obviously we do. Yeah, we do have some great recipes for some for shank meat. Venison shanks, oh, yeah. And it is amazing.
Mm -hmm. Actually, I've got I got this uh, skin down almost far enough to uh, to pop the joint, which is what I'll do in just a moment. So I'm going to try and get the other side of the skin down and the rest of this side down as far as I can before I take the, the joints off. That may not be practical, but but we'll do what we can. Tell me what you used to do besides this. I mean, what are other people doing that you're not doing? Well, a lot of folks will will take this deer and they'll uh, they'll cut out the uh, the backside and uh, gut it and take all the way up to the esophagus and, uh, and then uh, take all the guts out and, uh, and then take the carcass, the whole carcass back and uh, hopefully age it. Um, and that's not a bad. That's not a bad thing to do. If you've got the space to age and a nice cooler, um, I, I recommend it. It's dandy. However, if you don't, and many of us who live in the city just don't have the space for that sort of thing, then uh, my method comes in very handy uh, because we can get 14 day aged venison just by uh, using a couple quick and easy techniques to preserve the, uh, the, the meat uh, in a very, very limited space. First tip is a 100 120 or 110 quart cooler, uh, which will handle a deer about almost any size, including a big one like this. Um, and uh, after that, uh, ice in two liter bottles. You can always add more wet ice, but here's the nice thing. Water breeds bacteria. So the less water you introduce into uh, your aging uh, situation, the better it's going to be all the way around. So what you're saying is that when you use bags of ice or loose ice, it melts and puts water onto the meat. Onto the meat, yeah. And what you're trying to do by using the two liters is you only have to deal with the condensation on the outside Precisely. instead of having it Having well, gallons of melt. water that you've got to, uh, that you've got to drain off. Right. And there still will be some water to drain off because we will use ice, but we're not going to use it ice exclusively. Uh, 14 days is a long time. That's a lot of ice. That's a lot of water. That's a lot of potential bacteria. So you've taken this deer down as much as you're going to on this side. Now you're just basically doing the same thing. On the opposite side, yeah. On the opposite side, which is cutting the skin away. Exactly. And normally this goes a little bit faster. Uh, but the older a deer is, the more attached they come, become to their hides, I think. Uh, in any case, it's just taking a little bit more work, maybe a few more cuts. Is the additional fat uh, a consideration? Is that it's probably making it harder too? But you know, as everything's tougher when you get older, as you <laughs> as you know, I get. Wait, are we talking about the deer? Or are we talking about you? Yeah, that's kind of <laughs> that's kind of where we're at here, isn't it? <laughs> For a smaller, younger doe. Uh, a smaller younger though this uh, we've already be done we've already be done yeah okay so we've got most of the skin off Except for down the lower part of the little back legs here. Now we're going to take apart the uh, the front joints. We'll get in here on this joint here and kind of feel in between the joint, and you can kind of cut around it, both sides, and the back. There you go. There we go. One. Okay. 
Okay, so now we're back and uh, new set of gloves. Yep. And now same we're gonna, knife and we're taking the shoulders off. Taking the shoulders off. Now I'm gonna try and get some of this flank meat. Normally there's not much flank meat on a, on a little dough, but this is a little dough. It's a big dough. And uh, we'll turn that flank meat into some nice uh, stew meat. I'm also gonna take some of this neck meat here. We'll find something to do with it. Normally, I don't uh, bother worrying with it because there's not that much, but this is obviously a very nice sized dough. Got quite a bit of uh, <laughs> quite a bit of shoulder here. <laughs> 